have a small prelude. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness 
and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility. That in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 80. We can read it together if possible. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O oh, Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O oh God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, and the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show, Show the, the light, light of, of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth and to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So happy first Sunday of Advent. It's a new church year. The last church year was quite an interesting one, wasn't it? And here we are, I think we're all ready for a new start. Our theme this year, this Advent, is those who dream, those who dream. It comes from Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. And we'll hear that Psalm later in Advent. It seems almost contradictory when we just hear Jesus saying, Stay awake, and yet our theme is dreaming, those who dream. You know, when we dream, you might think of daydreaming, you might think of dreaming while you're asleep. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes our dreams help us to escape reality. We imagine, we daydream what might be or what will be, what we hope for, what we long for. And sometimes those dreams also, that dreaming helps us to change, to transform reality. And then we think about God's dream. We talk about God's dream a lot, God's kingdom, God's reign. It's what God's dream is for us and for the whole of creation, that we would all be restored to wholeness, both in ourselves and among each other. So there's a lot to dream about, a lot to long for, to yearn for, to desire, which is part of what Advent is all about. That yearning long ago, the yearning for a Messiah to come, and also our yearning now for the second coming, which we know is already happening. God is breaking into our world. The kingdom is already coming, and yet it's not here yet, not in its fullness. So we move from that long green season where everything is green and the, the leaves on the trees are green, everything. We're, we're thinking about just ordinariness, ordinary time. And as we begin Advent, we move into extraordinary time. 
Our dreams become extraordinary because we yearn for God who became a child. Imagine the immensity of God in the package of a baby. It jolts us and it reminds us that there's always new possibilities, always something to desire. When I was a teenager, I used to have posters on my wall a lot, even into, into my college years. And as I was preparing this, one of the quotes they had uh, was a quote that I had on a poster on my wall in my, uh, in my bedroom and then in my dorm room. And it was a poem by Langston Hughes, the African-American poet. And the part that was on my poster was this, hold on to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold on to dreams. That meant a lot to me then, and it still does, asking us to get in touch with our dreams. And yet Advent 1 brings us into a moment that I think is not something we think about in Advent. Grief, lament. Lament meaning intense grief, intense expressions of grief. In our first reading, we hear, tear open the heavens and come down. Remember, it's remembering that God once did good things for us, did wonderful, amazing things for us. And we yell to God, come on down again, come down. Tear up everything and get down here, God. Where are you? We need you. Remember your dream to be with us. I think in this day, in, 1920, in 2020, this day, that's what a lot of us are feeling. Lamenting and grief over the lives we used to be able to live, the places we used to go, the people we used to see, not just in little boxes on Zoom, but in the flesh. And that's what we want again. We want people's flesh near us to touch them. As much as we desire God to come, to touch God in the flesh of Jesus. And you know what? It's okay to grieve. As a matter of fact, it's important to grieve, to lament, to keep going over and over. Darn it, God. We missed Christmas together as a community. Now we're probably going to miss, we missed Easter. Now we're going to miss Christmas. How, how can you let this happen? but that is our world. And that is the reality of today. And so we have to grasp that reality, grasp the truth that a virus is keeping us apart. And yet because we love and care for each other, we continue to give up that ability to be together. And yet we are together, we are connected. We're connected in the communion that we give out to each other, even though it's unusual these days. We're connected in the prayers we pray and we're connected in the boxes. And even if we're not in the little boxes, we still connect. It's part of God's dream and it will happen again. So now Jesus tells us to keep awake. We've seen the brokenness we grieve, but Jesus tells us, don't give up. Don't give up hope. The vision, the dream will become reality. And not just the vision of us being together, but God's vision for the world, for healing, for wholeness. I don't believe that we will end in flames. In, dis, in dysfunction, in grief. 
God wants us to end in joy. God calls us to a joy that is more than we can ask or imagine, as it says in scripture. And so let us be those who dream, those who dream of God's coming to us in whatever way we need today in 2020. God's dream of coming to us in the midst of time, 2,000 years ago, and at the end of time. This is just the beginning of God's dream. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the prayers of the people this morning, each petition ends with the words, teach us your ways, O God. And all are invited to respond that we may walk in your paths. People of God, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray. Wake from sleep, O God, your church. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as salvation draws ever nearer. Teach us your ways, O oh God, that we may walk in your paths. Wake from sleep, O oh God, this nation. May we beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. May we learn war no more. Teach us your ways, O oh God, that we may walk in your paths. Wake from sleep, O oh God, your creation. May the mountains rise to meet you and the crops of the fields burst forth in praise. Teach us your ways, O God, that we may walk in your paths. Wake from sleep, O God, this region. May there be peace and prosperity within our walls. Make clear our paths that we may walk in your light. 
teach us your ways, O God, that we may, may walk, walk in your, your paths. Path. Wake from sleep, O God, those in pain and sadness. Deliver them from their darkness, that they may rejoice in your light. May all those waiting for healing find your salvation is near. And you're invited to add your own petitions and thanksgivings. Teach us your ways, O oh God, that we may we walk, walk in, in your, your paths. paths. Wake all your people from sleep, O oh God. Prepare your saints for that day when the Son of Man will return with the saints at rest to reign with us forever and ever. Teach us your ways, O oh God that we may walk in your paths. Creator God, source of all love, you are the one who knits us together. Unite us in love that we may rejoice in one another's hope, persevere in suffering, and extend hospitality to strangers. Unravel our hearts, Holy Spirit, and thread new life through us. Craft us to be your hands and feet, Lord Christ, a thousand strand rope, strengthened and known by genuine love. Connect us, woven as one, as you are, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore and strengthen us through our savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Walk in love. Walk in love as Christ has just gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
also of you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs of everlasting life, that when Christ shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And now we pray together on page 13, the prayer for spiritual communion. Blessed Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. In this Advent season, there is a special blessing. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.
Thank you, Elena. Beautiful. And I also want to say thank you to Dean and Catherine Ritchie. Uh, if you don't know, 